What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy Marcellus Ease, and don't panic quite yet. Now, in part four of this series, we'll go over how the Knicks defense put on a show, and also in combination with Jalen Brunson taking advantage of the 76ers not necessarily loading up his attacking lanes. And this was a very surprising move by the 76ers and Nick Nurse to take this approach, especially when the offense early on was struggling. But both teams kept it real close to the hip, keeping their turnovers low in an old school East Coast battle. I'm not gonna say no more, let's just get to it. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. So the Knicks started off this game shooting very cold from the field, unlike in game three, as guys outside of Jalen Brunson shot two of 10 from the field. And you would think Nick Nurse and the 76ers would make adjustments and go back to Kyle Lowry sagging off his defender and getting into his attacking lanes. But surprisingly, they didn't go to that. Now with those team struggles early on, let's take a look at some of the defensive looks that Jalen Brunson gets early on. We're gonna see Tyrese Maxey stunt. Joel Embiid play drop back coverage coming off this pick and roll. And this is a very similar look to game one. This is how Philly's starting off, but but Brunson makes light work of it. So Nick Nurse right here early on is showing that he's going to respect Josh Hart's shot. Look at Kyle Lowry. Does not make that full commitment. Embiid right here on the strong side, one-on-one. -on -one, playing drop back coverage. Brunson takes advantage, creates the spacing. So the 76ers early on continue to show relaxed coverage on Jalen Brunson. As the Knicks right here go to a game plan in which they started executing during game three, setting screens up up top, letting Brunson go downhill one-on-one -on -one with Embiid. Take a look at Lowry, he's not really sagging off. Coming off that screen, drop back coverage, and Brunson straight up pulls up. Very relaxed to start off this matchup. So with the Knicks offense starting to get cold, we're gonna see them execute something they've been doing throughout this series, which is whoever Maxi is guarding in transition will be the one to set the screen. So if Maxi was guarding OG, OG would be the one to come around, set the screen to try to get Brunson on Maxi on that pin down. As Josh Hart sets a perfect pin down, and we're going to see Brunson right here take Maxi to school. And he's able to draw that foul. So once again, right here, pay attention to Joel Embiid as he barely even moves in this drop back coverage. Look at him. Doesn't contest nothing. Barely even moved. Barely even got back for the rebound. Yeah, with Embiid not being as mobile, we're going to see Brunson right here. Two screens, which side to go on. We already know he's going to come off and attack Embiid. Brunson gets a good look right here, gets Embiid how he wants him, dropping back, and he just bricks it. But this will continue to be a reoccurring theme right here. This is a well-designed play right here because either way, if Brunson goes left or right, the corner help defender is going to have to make a commitment. So that's Dante possibly being wide open. If Batum helps out after Brunson comes off that screen, then OG's right in his spot. And once again, for some reason, even with the rough shooting in the first quarter, the 76ers held back from sending help when Jalen Brunson is dealing one-on-one -on -one with Joel Embiid going downhill. Yeah, as soon as Embiid sits his doofy ass down, the Knicks offense just flows. Just go to that pick and roll with IH and Brunson. Points in the paint come a lot easier. Yeah, right here, we see Brunson get into his creation bag one-on-one -on, -one on the island with Cameron Payne. Look how easily he sets up Precious. He just misses it, man. But that was a perfect setup. Precious, you got to dunk that. Okay, so Brunson comes off the screen with Maxi trailing behind him. But right here, he stays real patient. Doesn't lose his dribble. Actually maintains it right at this point. And look at Lowry. Look at the whole 76ers defense. They're going to leave Brunson on the island after he's already been hot for the first two quarters. McBride drawing some respect. OG drawing some respect. This is very surprising to see after the way they guarded Brunson in games one and two. So at this point right here, the Knicks are mounting a comeback. And outside of Brunson, their shooters are not necessarily killing it. So surprisingly, the 76ers at this point are not going to have anyone actually back up and bead as they're respecting the shooters still, electing to stay attached to them. 
So the Knicks did a real excellent job throughout this game being in sync while just dealing with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey and all their pick and roll actions or just dribble handoffs throughout the perimeter. Now right here, we're going to see Hartenstein not allow Maxey to make that turn while at the same time, everyone being sync when it comes to the recovery. So right here, Maxey can't really make the turn. Look at Jalen Brunson, also Hartenstein. As soon as Maxi makes the pass, everybody switches. And now with the full recovery, just forces up a contested shot. So right here is another example of the pick and roll between Embiid and Maxi. So Isaiah Hartenstein is going to hedge, make sure that Maxi does not turn around, while at the same time, OG is going to come up and rotate to Embiid. Meanwhile, Isaiah Hartenstein, this is not a switch. He's going to actually recover right back to Embiid to help out. Pay attention to OG right here. Now pay attention to Hartenstein. Great rotations. The Knicks defense definitely in sync. Now throughout this series up until this point, we've seen at times that Kelly Oubre and Tobias Harris not really know where to be on the court. Their spacing is kind of poor. And at times without the ball, they don't necessarily know how to create that offense or just get it going. And this is where vets like Nick Batum come in. As right here, we'll take a look at him as he knows exactly what to do at this very moment right here, as he's going to set the screen on OG to get this offense going. So you screen right on OG. So right here, Tyrese Maxey is hunting for Jalen Brunson, and he gets him on the switch. Now OG right away is treading back to help out because the Knicks defense has been on point with the switches. And not only that, something I kind of alluded to in the last segment in which Tyrese Maxey missed quite a few teammates in that fourth quarter when they were open from three. And that's something that he's going to get better at the further he progresses into his career. Right here, we're going to see the same thing kind of happen right at this point. He could thread the needle to the open shooter. But again, he misses him. And just like in game three, he elects to take the tough finish at the rim. So even through the next struggles right here, we're going to see McBride go under the screen. Okay, sticking with Maxi. They're going to run it again. But this is not a switch. As once this pass comes in, now it's time for Brunson to step up. You can even see OG pointing. Brunson is supposed to rotate. Now, while he's rotating, Precious is supposed to get back and contest this. Great contest. Paul Reed misses. So as you can see, it's the small things that kind of keep the Knicks in these games, especially after that first quarter shooting. They're just trying to mount this comeback and defense is helping out. Now in this series, neither team's defense has actually forced that many turnovers. When it comes to taking care of the ball, both of these teams are really good at it. Now right here, we're going to see the combination of Precious and McBride with the support of OG and Josh Hart. As we're not only going to get great rim protection, we're also going to get great rebounding to prevent the offensive glass for second chance opportunity. And that leads right into transition with the Knicks get easy buckets. Once again, right here, the same scenario plays out as Maxi rejects the screen, but now he's got to deal with pressures who has that same type of athleticism. But check out OG on the boards right here, preventing the offensive rebounding. So the defensive unit as a package it's just everything is clicking right now. Precious being part of that trade package that came with OG and all that development that was just put into McBride with the great foresight of making a trade for Josh Hart and signing Dante DiVincenzo. We're now starting to see the pieces of the puzzle make sense. So right here, we're going to get more at pick and roll. McBride does a great job going under the screen. And now right here, we're going to see Dante step up in his rotation. As Hartenstein is not going to allow Maxi to make that turn. And finally, we're going to see Maxi actually miss a pass right here. You see how he took that step up? So now Brunson is engaged. He stunts in a little bit. So him taking that step in, once Brunson engaged with that right foot on his way back, it should have been an instant pass to Lowry. Lowry is actually open right here. Should have been a pass to Lowry. But look how he brings his body back and swings the ball. Now Brunson has enough time on the closeout. Now, Maxi right here hunting Jalen Brunson as he's going to get him right here on the switch. And now one-on-one, -on -one. but now check out McBride. He's going to blitz 
Maxi right here. And as he blitz, everybody's going to rotate. Everybody's going to rotate. OG might lean in just a little bit. And Maxi's pass to Lowry is what the Knicks are trying to close out and make it much more difficult for him to make. So Joel Embiid has sat down the first five minutes of the second quarter. And in that time span, the Knicks were able to capitalize getting eight points as Hartenstein and Brunson went into their floater pick and roll game. And they limited themselves to only one turnover on 66% shooting while the 76ers were only able to get two points. Their offense ended up stagnating going 0 for 8 in the field with only two free throw shots. As Precious Achua introduced a brand new dynamic into the 76ers is dealing with someone who could defend the interior as well as use his athleticism to get out on the perimeter. But even though the Knicks end up winning those minutes while Embiid sat down, by the time Jalen Brunson sat down for about three minutes, the 76ers themselves went on a run scoring 10 points on 66% shooting with no turnovers. Embiid was able to go to the line and get points while the Knicks offense only stagnated, shooting 25% from the field. But again, they kept their turnovers real low because it would have been a much even bigger run had they been loose with the ball. Now for Embiid, when he catches the ball in the post, we're going to see the Knicks instantly blitz or put extra pressure on him. This is normally going to follow up from a double team as well as other players rotating. So with Maxi, it's a hedge coming off the screens. And when it comes to Embiid, it's a double team. Anytime he gets the ball near the elbows, high post, or in the paint. They made it real difficult throughout the course of this game just for him to receive the ball. Very similar to Jalen Brunson in the first two games of this series. And over a duration of time, that's going to begin to wear and tear on that bum knee. Check out Embiid once he gets the ball in the high post. OG creeps up. Dante creeps up. Look at OG creeping up. Hartenstein making a play on the ball. Now right here is Embiid jocks for position. We're going to see the Knicks actually attack him as soon as they make his move. This is going to be an anticipation from Jalen Brunson because they are emphasizing on not letting Embiid operate around the elbows and the high posts, which he's been killing the Knicks thus far in this series. But as soon as Embiid tries to make his move, it's like Brunson anticipates it. Now notice the rotation. Once Jalen jumps, everyone to his right has to rotate at the same time. So they get the ball right back to Embiid. And now Deuce McBride is anticipating the same thing. Once he puts the ball down, that's when the double team comes and everyone to his right is supposed to rotate. So that's how the rotations go. So this was some of the strategy that was implemented on Embiid during the first half, just to get his energy levels working very early in this game. Because with the possibility of him going down 3-1, there was a very good chance that Nick Nurse might play them the whole second half. And this will be eventually a great test for Embiid's playoff stamina, which has always been in question. So even though the Knicks outside of Jalen Brunson struggled in the first half with their shooting, guys still impacted the game by getting inside points like Hartenstein, with his floater game, OG Ananobi and Josh Hart working the glass, keeping the 76ers from getting second chance points. And our guy, Miles McBride, coming through as he's been doing this whole series with timely buckets as he had eight points going into halftime. But both teams, like the previous three games in this series, have kept their turnovers down, which kept it close going into half. So right here, we'll be taking a look at some of the looks that Jalen Brunson is getting in the third quarter. Hartenstein with great technique going right behind Kelly Oubre. That way he can adjust and rescreen, which he does right here. And interesting enough, look at Tyrese Maxey right here. No sag. Normally from game one and two, they would have the defender right here sag off. Now Kyle Lowry sagged off on the weak side, but really it's supposed to be Maxey right here stunting in, but he doesn't. That's a good look right there. So Brunson and Hartenstein gets into a lot of rescreening. Pay attention to Tyrese Maxey right here. He does not kind of stunt in. This is very interesting. Even though Dante has been cold. He's been very cold thus far. But they're respecting the shooters as Brunson gets a good look right here. But it's interesting that even though Jalen Brunson has been red hot, they're leaving him on an island with Embiid. Once again right here, pay attention to Maxey. Doesn't lean in. 
and kind of clog up the lanes of Brunson. Dante is, is 0 for 2 at this point. He hasn't really been a factor. But they leave Brunson with a pull-up good look. Very surprising. Now, this leaves us to wonder if the 76ers don't want Joel Embiid to get exposed upon some of these recovery rotations. That's the reason why they're not playing a similar style of defense as they did on Brunson in game one and two. Because he's red hot at this point. And just to give him that much space, you're asking him to just cook. Now, one thing right here, this game really exposed is the fact that Kelly Oubre, in a way, he bothers Jalen Brunson. We're going to see throughout this segment, Brunson consistently hunting Tobias Harris because it draws a more favorable matchup. Now, interesting enough, Tobias Harris, the last deal he signed with the 76ers, at the time it was considered either a near max deal or it was a max deal after Jimmy Butler had went to Miami. But Kelly Oubre is on a minimum contract, and it just seems like he has a bigger impact on his team than even Harris at times. But the wingspan of Oubre has bothered Jalen Brunson, especially in game one and two. But we're going to consistently see Brunson hunt for Tobias Harris on the island. And shockingly enough, the 76ers do not double team. They don't send any type of help. Now, Brunson really went off in this third quarter. But check the technique, very similar to Hartenstein. Right behind Batoon, he's going to set this screen and then just make that readjustment, choosing whatever side is best suited for the current circumstance. Right there to the left side. Now, at this point, MB backpedaling. You would think guys would stunt in more. Brunson really being the only one that got hot. Dante just catching fire. It's got to really be MB's mobility. They just look at Kyle Lowry, he just stunts in, but doesn't really fully commit like he did. Got OG out here. They're really respecting the Knicks shooters. These type of coverages is a complete 180 than what we saw in the beginning of the series. So with the quarter just about to end, Nick Nurse is about to do DeAnthony Melton <laughs> dirty. He leaves him on an island, dolo. Once again, the 76ers just really respecting the Knicks shooters. They really are. I'm surprised Lowry, and especially Lowry in game one, he stunted in way more, got in the way. See, Oubre would normally be right here in the paint. But the 76ers did DeAnthony Melton dirty. Look at Brunson. Don't disrespect me by having him guard me. <laughs> Yo. Now the Knicks defense in the second half continued to build on what they did in the first half. I mean, this was definitely a coming out party. These guys were clicking like Golden State, just in sync. Now with the maxi and then B pick and roll up top, or just any maxi pick and roll, the Knicks do not want him to make any type of turn. So Josh Hart right here does a good job. Look at Embiid, he gets through that screen. So now this is a switch instantly. Now it's Hartenstein's job to make sure that Maxi does not fucking turn. Does a great job. So at this very moment in the perimeter, this is the Maxi strategy. Now when it comes to Joel Embiid, look at Josh Hart right here. The Knicks are instantly gonna double team. They're not gonna let him cook around that high post. Now when the double team comes, Brunson rotates. Dante rotates. I heart gets, gets back in case defender cuts in. But everybody rotates. See Brunson pick up Tobias Harris. Now, the only thing that fucks up this play for the 76ers right here is Kelly Oubre staying right here. He should have came across right here. But in an earlier segment, I showed a perfect play like this where having a veteran like Nick Batum, he knows exactly what to do off ball in these type of situations to make it easier for the 76ers to score but due to some of his i guess physical limitations at this very moment the fact that he's a long-standing nba veteran he's not gonna get enough burn in this series especially with the knicks being as physical as they are so with all these type of rotations happening we're starting to see mb make a lot of mistakes look at josh harris look like he's about to double team and also you got dante creeping in but Embiid, as usual in the playoffs, he's going to start making his mistakes. Historically, he's been the MVP of the regular season, but not in the playoffs. So now right here, the Knicks deal with the pick and roll out on the perimeter. We're going to see Dante try to lean in and stunt more to try to avoid this dribble handoff. 
For the purpose, we do not want Maxi making this turn and going downhill. So Dante jumps it and B rescreens. And now Hartenstein makes sure that he's not going to make this turn right here. He gets to where he needs to be. They avoid it. Dante recovers. Now the Knicks play great defense to get the turnover. So we're seeing a number of variations of this, whether it be McBride and OG out on the perimeter or OG starting off the possession in transition, Garden and Bede, or a combination of DiVincenzo along with Josh Hart. Either way, the Knicks roster is deeply designed to have numerous guys not only have the ability to fight and jump through some of these screens, but it draws up a different variation of speed, size, and length, enough to bother Maxi and Embiid throughout four quarters. So this series is definitely shaping up to be what I thought it would when it comes to the chess match between these two teams. So right here, we're starting to see some of the eventual mistakes that will happen with the Knicks having the depth on their team to deal with the pick and roll with Maxi and Embiid, just drawing up a lot of different looks. Eventually, frustrations will begin to show. So Joel and B continuing to deal with the versatility of this Knicks roster, just having the ability to have guys guard him. We're going to see Jalen Brunson stunt in. And as soon as he goes for the double team, Hartenstein is going to rotate. This defense in this second half is, is on some other shit. Even though Embiid had turnover issues, he was still able to get Hartenstein in foul trouble with him picking up his fifth personal before the third quarter ended. And it made a way for Precious Achua, OG Nobi, and Josh Hart to step up. As they all continue to impact the game without scoring necessarily, Josh Hart get into the free throw line about six times in that fourth quarter. Despite him having four personal fouls himself, he was able to play spectacular defense, keep the 76ers off the boards. Same thing for OG Ananobi. But when the fourth quarter had initially started, Jalen Brunson has sat out the first three minutes while Joel B played the whole second half. And within that time frame, the 76ers were not able to capitalize as they not only scored the same amount of points as the Knicks, due to timely buckets by Deuce McBride. And man, I gotta say, Deuce has come a long way, barely getting any minutes, and now he's hitting clutch shots in a very big playoff series. And he's really filled in nicely once Emmanuel quickly was shipped off to Toronto, and he's really stepped up. And in a way, this says a lot about the Knicks coming a long way into developing players. But Jalen Brunson checked right back in with the Knicks still up one and putting up a solid effort defensively. So very early on, and beat on that bum leg, has to fight to get to his spot. As soon as he puts the ball on the ground, that's when the double team comes and then everyone else rotates. See, look at Brunson. But Embiid settles for the shot. Here's another perfect example of these rotations. Check out Embiid fighting OG. And now as soon as Precious comes in for the double team, everyone's going to begin to rotate. Even though Oubre was able to convert, at least they forced someone else to make the play outside of Embiid. Now out in the perimeter, once again, these plays right here are not switches for McBride and Precious. This is not a switch for them. The idea here is prevent Maxi from going downhill. But shout out to Precious because not only he slides his feet, he recognizes that on this dribble handoff, Kelly Oubre is taking it himself. Slides his feet real well. Nice block. Now Maxi has McBride on an island, but also pay attention right here to Embiid fighting for possession. Right on that bum knees, fighting for possession. Almost leads to a turnover right here. But now... McBride is going to double team Embiid if he starts getting to his post-up game around the elbow and watch everyone else make their rotations. McBride right here, double teams. And now look at Josh Hart. Closes out on Maxi. At the same time, Brunson closes out on Kyle Lowry. Now he's swarmed. And has to take a tough shot. Great defense. Let's take a look at that one more time. As soon as the double team comes, look at Hart and also look at Brunson on their rotations. There's a the double team. Look at Hart, closes out. Brunson switches. Embiid has no look. 
John Starks wilding down here. He wants that travel call. Yo, John Starks has been in this series. Shout out to Starks. We see you, baby. Now, this play right here is what New York basketball is all about. This is why we love the Knicks right here. We're going to see Jalen Brunson fight to avoid this switch. They are hunting right now. They want to put Maxi on Brunson. Brunson avoids it. Look at that. Maxi's trying to hook him. <laughs> Maxi trying to do everything to get that switch. They're going to chase it again. Look at them. They're still hunting for it. That's a second time. Two times so far they're hunting for it. But then it's not over yet. They're going to hunt for it one more time. And now they got it. Now they got it. <laughs> but meanwhile, while they spend all that time hunting, look at the shot clock. Four seconds left. Now, this pass right here off the double team. The Knicks in this series have begun to attack this cutoff man right here. By just having guys close out on him. See? See how tough that shot was? Going along in this series, the Knicks are slowly going to make it difficult for this shooter right here. Whether it's Maxi, Oubre, Batoon, or Kyle Lowry. But just going back to this play, about a second left. Precious comes up big. <laughs> Look at Starks. <laughs> now, towards the end of this game, the Knicks' tenacity on defense actually translated on the offensive end. Because with Kyle Lowry being on the floor, along with Tyrese Maxey, with the Knicks dragging Embiid way out here, by having Precious set screens way far out, it's going to present conundrums. Once again, pay attention to Kyle Lowry. Look who he has to box out. <laughs> you got OG and Precious. Meanwhile, the 76ers power forward is fighting off Josh Hart. This is tough. And Precious is able to draw the foul. So with Kyle Lowry still being out there, we're going to see the Knicks snag up two more offensive boards with under two minutes left in the game. So the fourth quarter defense continues to be in sync. Check out OG and B battling down low. And McBride is going to double team and beat, not even letting him get comfortable. But within that double team, we're going to check out the rotations. As on this closeout right here, let's check out Precious on the recovery. As he's able right here to contest Maxi. Let's take a look at that again. OG fighting and bead. McBride instantly double teams. Precious steps up. Josh Hart now steps up. And great recovery on the closeout by Precious to contest that. Once again, right here, we're seeing the Knicks defense being in sync as Jalen Brunson is going to initiate the double team. Now everyone's going to go ahead and rotate to the right. Double team. Look at McBride. Steps up. Precious steps up. Now Josh Hart with a great contest. And OG protects the defensive glass, most importantly. Now the Knicks defense is so in sync, not only because of the rotations, but also the rim protection. Precious contests a shot while jumping away, and Josh Hart is able to protect any second chance opportunity by snagging that board. Now from this angle right here, we see Precious contests while jumping away from the hoop because we all know Embiid is looking for the contact and looking for any way to cry for a call. Let's look at it again. Precious does a tremendous job on Embiid right here. But the Knicks defense held the 76ers to only 16 points in that fourth quarter and Embiid going 0 for 5 from the field. So everything was working in unison when it came to the Knicks defense for game four. And when it came to the Knicks offense, it was really propelled by the defense as they didn't really have a solid quarter. But right here, we're going to take a look at some of the looks that Brunson was getting in the fourth. As for some reason, he still was with Embiid on the island, as we see right here. The 76ers were still respecting the Knicks shooters, even though we shot at an abysmal 28% from the field. All right, so finally, this is something that I alluded to earlier on in this segment. You see Brunson waving? <laughs> He's like, bring him here. He is actually calling for Tobias Harris. <laughs> he loves that matchup going up against Harris. As Kelly Oubre, his wingspan was bothering Brunson 
between games in one and two. But this is this is interesting right here. <laughs> Calling Josh Hart to set up this switch right here. Ubre is just a minimum player that was thrusted on this team last minute. Tobias Harris, at the time he got his max contract, he was considered pretty much a decent defender throughout the league. But it's interesting enough, Brunson pretty much finds him as food at this point. Now here's Brunson once again. He's going to run multiple pick and rolls to try to get Harris as he loves that matchup. Look at him and Hart. He's going to keep running it. Now he's got Harris. <laughs> once again, there's something about Harris. He views Harris as food. Now this right here pretty much sums up Joel Embiid's night as he's always been a step too slow on these switches. And just all the consistency of OG and Hartenstein making him work hard for all four quarters, the constant double teams, and all the players involved in those double teams from McBride to Josh Hart to Dante DiVincenzo, along with the combination of OG and Hartenstein. You see where it began to take a toll on him as he played the whole second half. And Brunson was able to capitalize off of all that by attacking him off the pick and roll, just getting him one-on-one -on -one going downhill. Embiid's stamina has always been a question mark in the playoffs. And it definitely played out in this game, particularly in the second half with three turnovers while hitting only two of seven shots. When the referees are not giving him 20 plus free throws, along with him scoring 50 points, things are gonna get even more difficult with this team being down 3-1. And that's gonna force the Sixers to play Embiid for a lot more minutes as this series continues. But for the Knicks defense, this definitely was a coming out party. Precious Achua inserting a brand new dynamic within the athleticism of that defense. And it proved to be too much for the 76ers. So we'll see how it plays out heading back to the Garden. Until next time, you fellas stay safe. Peace.